Boom. Time. It looks a little bit low quality and a little bit of flag, but hopefully you can all hear me. Maybe you could, uh, my first time doing a live stream, so um, I'm testing out the, the broadcasting software. So I'm not sure exactly how, uh, let me know and uh, I can kind of tweak it if needed, and then I'll get started as soon as possible. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about events so that everyone gets as much info as possible. Uh, just a bit of a heads up, this is my first time uh, live streaming, like I just said, I've done plenty of these as webinars, but uh, not through LinkedIn's on platform. Um, also, I've not done this presentation for, for a month or so, so um, we'll see how it goes, we'll see if I can fit it all in and, and cram as much as possible. Up to your, uh, questions um, specific to your situation, my experience. People are kind of having the same problems with their job search at the moment. So if you're having that kind of problem, then others probably are as well. Um, further ado, let's go. Okay. So, um, we are going to be cover off um, how to write a powerful CV that grabs attention. We're going to do weeks in press and salary negotiation that gets you paid what you deserve. I think those are the kind of the holy trinity of what makes a really effective job. Uh, and you need to get all three right. Side. Um, there are obviously other elements. We can talk about networking. If you get these three things right, that's what we'll set you up for. So who am I? Why am I telling you this? You know, why did you uh, this is what I've got to say? Um, my background is talent acquisition and recruitment. Uh, that's both internal, that's external, embedded as well, doing consultancy stuff. So I've seen people like recording. Um, mostly IT sales, tech sales, um, but also I've done some projects stuff, industrial engineering as well. So uh, I've had a nice kind of broad exposure to different how to do things. Uh, and the same call truths. Uh, um, knowledge has been gathered. Hundreds of candid conversations I've had with hiring managers. So, you know, I send over CVs all the time. I've looked up CVs and um, I spend the time with hiring managers getting their feedback that may to you, the candidate. Uh, I'm sure some of you here have been frustrated with that feedback before. Um, and so, you know, that feedback is sometimes and you kind of disseminate that and look at uh, what, what people actually think. And I've always worked in a Right, so I know what works and what doesn't work because my salary ultimately depends on, on that. Um, and I also work closely with candidates to get them the highest salary. Is that important? Because when I'm giving you this advice, you know that I'm going to kind of squeeze you in there, but as an agency recruiter particularly, you're, you're working with people to negotiate. Because that obviously um, is related to the fee that you charge. So let's start the CV. That's the first point of contact, and as I'm going to talk about in a moment, what makes a market leading CV? It's critical to get this right because uh, it really is the, the first impression, it sets the benchmark, uh, and you, what people think of you uh, as you go. And so we're going to start by demonstrating who you really are. Okay, so that's the first uh, point. So, how, how do we do this? How can we create like, an impactful CV? Um, so first impressions count. Your salary negotiation starts with your CV because you have to be competitive with your peers. And um, the doorway uh, to, to your first stage interview, you know, really it is multiple times throughout the interview process by people who will never speak to you in the interview process. Um, and it's a reminder and the kind of starting point for um, that's trying to come across as a candidate. 
And this is another thing I hear all the time, no matter how senior you are, the playing field is level. So if you're really experienced, um, you're a senior manager, a leader of some often go, well, I've, I've hired people, right? So why um, do I need to really look at my CV? I know what CV look like. But of course, you're not competing against the people you hire. You're competing against the people at your level, your peers and step above you. And so it's really, really important that you still take the time to, to get that right. Um, point is hiring managers will still bend over backwards to get the right candidate. And that would be a tough market at the moment. There's lots of jobs that don't really exist, that people aren't hired, hiring that motivated to hire. But if you are a really good candidate and you can demonstrate that you bring value, then hiring managers will do what they can to get you in. What does high value mean? You know, hiring managers, key factor is for a return on their investment from you. And so this document you'll see that you need to declare that um, and without much effort. Um, and we can measure this in loads of different ways based on the number of um, niche job sector, um, bottom line fund fundamentally, is there a budget for it? So what we want is we want, we want their faces to light up like this, okay? Uh, you go on a daffy duck, this person in, because they're gonna make a big impact in our business. More that's what it is. And the second thing I'd like to say, say and you know, as well, because it's completely true, um, quality means that it's quantified. You have to quantify what you've done, okay? You have to put facts, figures, and statistics, which is what I say all the time, CV in a digestible way, so people know exactly how good you are. Um, so this is a, um, a candidate I worked with a little while ago. A really uh, good candidate, very strong, uh, skills are uh, very likable great CV, not very normal cv uh and it's right below their name and they're uh, addressing someone um this is their intro and you might look at this and think well this is fine meaningful and um, it said strategic solution a technical program they did behind rapid roi generated organizational capability and performance 20 percent of six clients and even global project teams that you can advance that methodology so you can read that there, and you might think, wow, that is really impressive, right? But the reality, when I said the playing field is level, um, this is exactly what is on every single other um, candidate at their level's CV, right? It's nearly identical opening um, paragraphs. And it's, um, this person works in project management, uh, yeah. quite a CK, 100K in terms of uh, salary and stuff. Interviews and um, um, this is what we tip it into now. Um, actual specific job experience, but I said let's take a moment to um, break it down so it's really easy to read. Let's look at your skills, look at the industry you work in, okay. Um, by here, uh, exactly what you do when you are on top of the you send your CV over, you know, touch it in my house straight away. We know. Um, if you're an e commerce company, um, um, the kind of stuff that you might see in, in, um, in the job descriptions, so we're making sure to put like the keywords in there, you know, that old uh, thing. Um, it's based on the job, and then we split the personal summary up into nice and easy paragraphs here. Um, you may be on the left hand line, uh, thing, but that's that's quite important. But as Bold sections here to highlight it. Twenty years of success, many significant capital, extensive complex problems, and so on. And really, the part I like a lot here is the notable projects. Obviously, a project manager works on projects, but you can do this. You could do case studies, notable achievements, anything that would really be significant and impactful on like, your future employer. So, um, we looked at the budget again. We're starting to quantify stuff now. How big is this project? Well, that 15 million pound project goes, oh, this is just some people that works for the right kind of scope and scale. Uh, 16 million pounds total, all personally managed, the number of reports. Uh, what was it in a couple of in the results? Okay, so you're looking at what's the uh, that you actually have on the business. Here's another example here. Um, what's the nature of it? What have you done? What's the scale of it? Um, business. Um, you might have seen some of my content where I talk about 
you know, not talking about your there to help the business, you know. Um, so focus on how this I am this, I am that. Um, so another quick case I think is worth worth highlighting because if you get this stuff right, you have way more opportunities. Manager, maybe a bit more related related to, to you. Um, you know, highly regarding enthusiastic board, team executive, CIO, everyone's for success in matching complex digital roles, crafting IT strategies, operating in the real world by IT. All this kind of stuff is perfectly normal, but we don't want normal, right? We need to kind of be a little step. Um, so let's have a look at what it becomes. So we've got a short summary still, but you put in, um, you know, some. 15 years of experience, their teams of up to 100 people and budgets. Straight away, bang, 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 someone can look at your CV and go, this person is at the right level. Are you from some jobs because you'll be too, uh, you're a bit overqualified? That's fine. You don't want that job anyway, right? You're in the right kind of ballpark now when you apply to people. Um, IT and broken it down here, uh, and we're starting to use keywords that people add. To see, uh, or actually in the job description. So, IT, this person has done loads of work, there. cloud strategy, HR analytics, uh, you know, hitting all these keywords, targets, and we're also talking about relevance. Same on the business, I've done the stuff. You know, if you're bringing in, you're bringing in revenue for the company, who doesn't want that? Uh, and some keywords and technologies here. So, can we see that we're starting to become? Uh, a little bit more um, focused in what we're saying, we're becoming a little bit more, uh, we're making it easier to read, easier to digest, and it's just more impactful, right? Um, let's continue then. So you see, it's not all about you, it's about what you can do. Start thinking about that. It's not about you, it's about what you can do then. The design of the CV really quickly. Um, I like design. Skill set at all. I highly recommend that's what I get Canva. Uh, if you've not seen them, check them. Free. Um, some of the templates are clean ones, but most of them are free. Uh, and it's dead easy to get your CV on there and work through it. Okay. So here's some more advice for CVs then. Less is more. Um, and, history. and in terms of content, so who it was famously said, perfection is not an editing method. Take away. So edit ruthless. Being relevant, cut it down, uh, and keep it really simple. Don't be afraid. Uh, again, along the same lines, um, um, sometimes you'll cram so much information on there, people just aren't going to read it. So, you know, that is fine. Uh, these are some of the templates you can get from that I've worked with. Um, they're the kind of stock ones. I like them. Some, some, um, some position people will say just do a plain text document. Uh, but I think there's nothing wrong with these. Um, business staff can process this information completely fine. So uh, don't worry about that. Bit of a myth. Okay, so let's move on to interview tips. Um, so some of you, where you're getting the odd interview here and there, and then and it's not going well, and you're not sure why. I would probably say there is um, key to kind of look inwards and figure out what's wrong there. See, you know, you can outsource that. Right? I do some CV writing. Outsource that if you need to. No one else can do anything for you. So how we can start improving it. So what makes a great interview? Well, it's two factors mostly. It's competence. Do they think you can do the job? Uh, and everyone has worked with people who are very, very likable and terrible at their job. So it is really important. Uh, and you know, if you can be really competent, really good at your job, and still not land the job. You're not kind of building that rapport and relationship properly enough. So here are five things to remember. You would have again heard all of these before, but I think it's really good. Uh, screenshot this, make a note of this, uh, and look at it right before you. Huge help. Uh, and this is the same for whether it's online or not. Um, five things to remember. Really important. That includes looking directly into the camera if you know, a video call, as you probably are nowadays. But remember, if you go into a a meeting in person as well. A lesson more, no waffling, no rambling. 
you know, I, I hit this uh, client a couple of times um, throughout this webinar, but keep it kind of clean and lean, less is more. Authenticity, warmth, and enthusiasm will win you the job. So, um, be nice, no negativity, um, just be yourself, and share a little bit of insight into your life, not just talking about yourself. Uh, and get enthusiastic and positive because we're not worried. Number four, I'll show you this one a little bit less often. Um, companies should really feel like you've got other opportunities throughout the interview process. Now, ideally, because you're following all these steps, your CV looks great, and you actually have uh, different companies buying uh, attention and for you as a candidate. But regardless, it's great a little bit of the matter. We're leaning on um, some sales techniques here, you know, a bit of the. Um, you know, you want a bit of a buzz around you. You want people thinking that you want you, that uh, you'll be off the mark. Um, and my advice really is to make them feel special. Uh, but if you've got lots of opportunities, the favourite. Uh, understand the company deeply and let them know that. Like, really extensive research. Check out all their new blogs and stuff like that. Uh, and and then sounds like the market as well. I'd add that as well. So that you can think of value in the interview, offer a perspective they're not falling from. So how can we demonstrate confidence? Um, you know, past experience, right? Can you do the job as required? Um, able to, um, I'm able to share that with them in the interview, you're able to show that. So again, using statistics and so on. Who's provided, um, so various companies have, um, different platforms, find out what they use, uh, ask them what they use, and talk about some similar stuff that you can use. I don't know why companies care about stuff quite so much, because most of these things are really easy to pick up these days, but you know, worth with them. Can you manage the level of responsibility? So are you like a senior financial responsibility? Is yeah, that the level where you manage your budgets, uh, or you're bringing in, you know, that. make sure you're talking about that kind of thing. Uh, what additional capabilities do you bring? Do you understand the problems? How can you fix them? Can you adapt to change some things? What are they now? That's so relevant now with AI. Um, but I would be asking them questions, not at the end, but throughout. Um, turn it into dialogue and start saying things like, you know, what kind of these are some of the stuff that we've been really looking at at the moment. You know, GPT or BARD or whatever, uh, hand screen. With that, this is some of the stuff that I've been doing that's quite interesting is, is this pie. And you can, you know, if you can offer a bit of consultancy even in the level, um, that was a huge uh, mark in your favor. So during the interview, we're trying to, um, we want to show that we've done the research, we know the industry inside and out, we can offer some human value. We've got evidence of that. Now that doesn't have to be, you know, like a document that you can bring out and say, okay, that's a typical. Um, this could just notes and tracking your performance at the moment that's wherever you feedback historically what have some of your deliverables been what have some of the things you've reported to your hiring manager been what are some of your kpis been you can add in ones of yourself right you can figure out like what, what kind of stuff is important uh, to you that might not and start bringing that kind of forward as evidence uh, if you see right if you've got all this stuff on your cv if your cv is really well written um, yeah, yeah, they can kind of assume some of this stuff and talk around it and you don't have to really push so hard. Um, so that's a really good point in where your CV makes your interview easy. Um, and you want to give amazing answers, right? So most people are underprepared. Give the same set of questions you expect to her 90% of every interview. So make sure you prepare for that. And that doesn't mean how But it means when someone says to you, um, um, tell me about yourself, you can just kind of answer it like that. And it, go, and it goes straight into your work experience. You know, I'm Tom, uh, I live in South Wales, uh, I've worked in recruitment for X amount of years, my starts off here. Um, you know, some of the things I've been interested in uh, have been, you know, and, and, and this is the kind of direction I'm thinking of. Um, it would be great to kind of point out if that's a good fit for us, uh, both of us today. Um, you know, and then you can start to elaborate what you need to elaborate on. Um, and you have industry specific questions as well, right? 
about AI, for example. What kind of stuff are you doing with AI at the moment? What does that look like? To go. Um, and then several people want to not not all the time when people ask me the right kinds of questions in interviews in because they uh, they interview and they might not be interview with you know uh, technical managers and so on uh, and so that's not part of their um set really so kind of do some of their job for them make sure they're answering what they need to hear not what they can necessarily ask kind of at the end of your answers say so is that exactly what you're looking for i'm happy to kind of uh, elaborate on um, feel free to kind of nudge me in the right direction and what you are hoping to find out. You know, saying those kinds of authentic, genuine, uh, marks at the end of your answers builds rapport, it builds trust, uh, it makes it easier for, for them to ask a question, have that two way conversation. Um, now, this is a really important thing, I should have probably made it because it's one of my favorite uh, interview tips, really. Have good stories for 60 to 80. So what does that mean? I mean, it needs to be. So if you work somewhere, uh, you just big project. Say, I worked in this project. It's this many uh, people on involved. Um, I did this. This is six months. That's one thing. But we want to turn that into a story, like an action story. So you say, oh, you know, okay, so this client who is got this many uh, employees, quite large establishments. Very short notice, we they came to us uh, and we had to come up with a um, solution for this niche issue. And so, colleagues, we got together, um, I spoke to the director, and we engaged with ex externals. We started to plan it out. So, what you want to do is like kind of narrate your story, talk about some of the characters involved, you know, a little bit, talk about some of the obstacles you faced. Um, talk about how you overcame them, or what the impact it finally had uh, for the client and for you as a you know, in your business. Um, whatever it might be, start to kind of humanize and turn these uh, into answers for, for the common questions. Because if you, and when you manage stakeholders, you should have a story uh, and it should be fleshed out, make people feel human. Uh, and then have two, uh, sorry, three or four stories that you must speak about. You've probably got three or four really great to highlight your uh, professional skills. So keep it in your back pocket, and then you can kind of quite a few different questions they might ask you. you know? uh, and you say, oh, this reminds me of this time actually when I just want to use it. Uh, and people really respond. Uh, so to ensure success, I check out their re recent LinkedIn and social posts that are topical. Who are the top? Use their names. You know, oh, I saw Jeremy, uh, the CEO, recently posted this. I can do that as well. You know, uh, we did uh, initiative. Uh, so it's really nice to see that you're doing those kinds of things yourselves. Um, blog post books like info for publications. Saw your research on this recently. Yeah, that's funny because it. You know, it doesn't actually quite match up with our experience and what I've seen. So it's good to, uh, you know, I think well, that's one of the reasons I'm looking to move is to be a bit more focused and uh, in line with where the market's actually going. So what kind of an existing client project contacts like talk about their clients. If you've got relevance to them, talk about your clients. Of these uh, and really able to discuss some uh, your particular part of the candidate, you will come across much more three dimensional uh, and it shouldn't feel like an interview. The state is, is important to practice, but um, you will get detailed feedback from real issues, and um, as you'll probably be aware, of you'll learn how to present your strengths in a more natural way. You can kind of through these questions and don't just kind of practice them quietly in your head. You know, Record yourself uh, and then watch the recording back and then you can kind of squirm and cringe at all the, the mistakes you make, and that will make you a better interviewee. Uh, will improve your ability to answer questions in a clear, focused, and confident manner. There should be kind of no hesitation when you go in for lots of these kind of uh, basic questions. And you'll reduce the number of interviewing. I've spoken to and interviewed people who are very established in their careers, you know, it might be in their 50s. Uh, retirement might be in sight for years and years, 
earning loads of money. I feel like I'm nervous when that came through. Um, particularly if you spend a long time in one place, not that many. So practice it, you know, get kind of uh, you'll forget something. Okay, four part. Uh, I'm just gonna have a quick check if there's any questions because I can't see uh, where they would come in. So um like I said, I'm not using LinkedIn or if there are any queries or questions, I can't see when you ask them either. Um, I'll have to try uh, to check again later. Carry on for now, then. Let's just kind of move forward with the uh, salary. See, uh, as that's always one of the most popular areas, actually. Um, one. And of course, we all want to be like uh, this bit of corner here, counting up our money, right? Hand to heart. Uh, inflation is up, uh, and we all need to be delivered. So, salary negotiation starts with your first impression, right? Your CV acts as an anchor for your final salary. I've mentioned this a couple of times, I'll say it again, it sets the bar. Um, so, kind of give yourself that first leg up and get a really good CV in. Um, you can build on this as well, uh, or you can allow your position to be eroded, right? So, if you come in up here, if you interview poorly, you kind of start to drop, or if you interview really well, you can start to build up that kind of. Uh, the things that you can do to maximize your salary have options, right? That goes without saying if you've got multiple job offers, if you want to, if it's important to you, you can pick uh, one you prefer or one with a higher salary or some combination thereof. Um, show clear intent. Uh, so tell people, look, this is how much I'm looking for. I don't really like when people spend so long trying to figure out what the budget is. And then obviously trying to pitch themselves in. I don't think that really works that much. And I know I think the most effective way to negotiate salary is to declare what you're looking for. And if that's a little bit aspirational, that's fine. With intent. Uh, and then you just have complete confidence when you say it. Uh, treat them like the only one you want, right? So we on a flight. You know, I really want to join you guys because of this reason. Uh, other options on the table, and now I'll move them quite quickly. Uh, and now, big companies, you know, I really um, like the look of them, and the team's great. And I think, you know, the, I prefer this reason. Uh, and people respond to like that. Um, you know, show that you understand the business, and we can have to come uh, I show that you're in it for the long haul, right? People don't want to offer short periods to show you're committed and you're there to they should feel like you also have high high and I don't mean of the salary, but I mean of them and the and the job and that you expect them to have high expectations of you because that's something that's overlooked sometimes, you know, people think about themselves rather than what they're doing for the company. But kind of imply or, or say you know, I know that you to deliver X, Y, and Z. I know, I know that you're, uh, you have high expectations for the job, uh, which is exactly what I'm looking for because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to work for a company that you're looking for. You know, if you can say that, that's quite powerful. And then always be willing to walk away. You know, it's not right for you. If the salary is not right for you, walk away. Uh, sometimes when you need the money or you need a job, but being willing to walk away is the easiest way to make sure. If you're desperate, if people can snipe your chance to and uh, they'll low board you. Uh, after negotiations. So, and do the When the negotiators look, look them in the eye, right? Um, just like when we talk about the interview stuff, don't forget. Same with the camera if you are uh, online. After you tell them, remember, don't speak. Right? So, do. Um, and then don't say anything. Uh, and and you know, they can have to kind of justify themselves if they want to. And it also comes as confident, uh, like you're not going to be swayed, right? So if you're looking for 50k, 100k, whatever they say, um, when they say, How much are you looking for on your salary? You say, Oh, I'm looking for 100,000 pounds a year. Say, Oh, but it's negotiable. And don't say, Oh, it depends on the other bits and bobs. Go higher. Don't go in and say, Look at the could be up to 70k packages out, and then it could be up to 50k. You know, say for the ones that are actually not going to get it anyway. 
practice saying it, just like the dealers is. Um, practice doing that to the camera a couple of times, obviously a partner or a friend. Um, it's just a wobbly little bit, you know, you in trouble with that. Sense that as well. And then start high. Give yourself yeah. a hand, 15, 20, 20, whatever it is, wherever you can. Uh, remember the money is without saying I'm sure you all know that. Uh, that's definitely things easier, doesn't it? You know, and it's most people move on from their job and that sort of help. Um, it's like a primary driver in terms of selecting a job. To kind of wrap up here, uh, I've kind of brought this through in 30 minutes, which is how concise. I know there's loads more that we can talk about in each of those topics. Um, I'm producing more and more content on this kind of stuff for you. Um, so the final point, so your CV is important for both your job and your salary. It doesn't just come doors, it sets everything up. Practice interviews can become more effective. And salary negotiations, it's kind of like dating. Um, there's these back and forth, it's true, but it's right to be uh, clear with your intent uh, and you have to put people in your eyes as well. Um, for those of you who've been on this webinar, I'll send you an email message um, because I have a uh, CV writing course, it's called How to Write a kind of step by step um, uh, in terms of how you can write it, loads of examples. Um, it's completely refundable. It's not going to jump within three months. Um, so it's not that expensive anyway. Uh, I have a 50% off at the moment on my website. So I can send you all the information there. I'm posting a graphic after this. Um, you need to Complete at stage, right? So it's still being works on heavily. Uh, coach. So it's just www.careers.coach. Um, so I'll send you the link for that in a bit. Yeah, there's a masterclass on CV writing. So it's a full 40 minutes on CV writing. It goes into loads of detail. Talk through and money back guarantee. You can guarantee it for you. Um, so I'll send some links. I'll put some comments out. Follow. LinkedIn, if you don't already, write to my stuff, share it up, you really appreciate it. I put this kind of stuff out there to help people and give back a little bit. Um, so if you can follow on and share my stuff, that would be great. Uh, and it'd be great if you signed up to my weekly as well. Uh, I'll do a post after this, and that is career.coach uh, slash user. Short, sweet, and focus on long term career development, job and interviews. So that is the bulk of the act. Webinar. And I'm trying to look for where I can find uh, people commenting. Questions, but I can't actually uh, see. Uh, I'll actually try to me here. If you've got any questions on, on, um, on salary, salary negotiation, on CV writing, and just post it here. I'm happy to talk about it now, or um, we can talk about it. Um, I do CV writing for people. I think you can you're looking for, uh, and I can just generally work with you to make sure you've got uh, get the job. At the moment, I know it's tough, so uh, I'm sure I can help you out there. Right, check me out here. All right, that's everything. Uh, wrap it up. Thank you all.